Here I'll be showing you how to extract text that comes before or after the first, second, third, or nth delimiter in a cell in Excel. And we are not going to be using text to columns here because that's not going to work in this example. Before we start, check the video description and click the link to Teach Excel so you can download the files for the tutorial and follow along. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials. Okay, so here I'm first going to show you the formulas and how to change them for your workbook, and then I'll explain every part of the formula so you can learn how it works. Now here what I've got is a sample file and its full complete directory path, and let's say that you want to get some piece of it. So you could do the file name at the end, you could do the first two or three directories. Basically, the example here doesn't matter. All that matters is that we want to get something before or after a specific occurrence of this slash. So there are three slashes here. Now if I use text to columns, it's going to split this up into four columns. One for this one, one for this one, this one, and this one. And if you want to get, let's say, this part of it, then you have to recombine them. And that's annoying. So here I've got nice, simple, cool formulas. Let's say you want to get everything before the file name. And right here is the formula. So go ahead and download this workbook, copy, paste it. You don't need to type it all out by hand. And to change this to work for your data set, very simple. Change every occurrence of A1 to where the cell that has the data is. A1 there, A1 here. And then you need to change this right here to the delimiter by which you want to break the data up. So I want to use a slash, so I put the slash right here. So just replace the slash with whatever you want. Whatever works for your data. And now there's one more thing to note, or two more things. After that, you want to say which, this three right here, it says which delimiter, which occurrence of the del delimiter to get. So the third occurrence, so one, two, three. Okay, so I want to get everything that comes before the third occurrence. So change the slash, change the three to the number of the occurrence you want to use. And then this dude right here, you'll see two squiggles. Squiggle and squiggle. Now all this is doing, and I'll explain this more later, is we're putting something in there that doesn't already exist so we can more easily find it. So all you have to do you don't need to worry about that. Just make sure that the squiggle does not exist in your data set over here. Oftentimes, people use the hashtag or the little number pad sign, but you can use whatever you want so long as it doesn't occur in your text over here. So I wouldn't want to use a slash here or a period or any characters. So I like using a squiggle, but some file names, for instance, do contain squiggles. So you could use that if you wanted. So make sure that doesn't exist in your data set. Make sure you change the slash to the delimiter and the occurrence of the delimiter. And you're all good to go. This one right here gets everything from the left of the cell. So just like this. Now this one down here is going to get it from the right. And all you have to change here, the exact same things we just changed. So it looks a little different. I'll explain that in a moment. But all you have to change, we got the squiggle, like I just covered, squiggle, squiggle, slash for the delimiter, A1, A1, and then of course the occurrence right here too. So I want to get everything to the right of the second occurrence of the delimiter. So I go over here, one, two, so it should start with another dir, or another directory, and then some file. Another directory, some file. All I did here, the difference between this and this, is that I changed the 2 to a 3. So you can see it's very easy to change this for your example. And if this is all you need, then you don't need to watch anymore. But now I'm going to tell you how the formula works. And this will be good because it will allow you to more easily change things to suit your situation in the future. So let's I'm going to bring this over a little bit and let us go right here. Okay. So remember, when working with formulas, it's best to go inside to outside to figure out how it works. And I will do that in a moment. But first, let's talk about the three functions that we have here. We have the left function, the find function, and the substitute function. The left function just gets something from the left of a cell. So we have to give it two arguments. The text that we want to get, 
you could type it in, or just a cell reference is usually used, and then how many characters do you want to get? So it starts from the beginning of the cell, and then you tell it I want to get 2 characters, 10 characters, 15 characters, 20 characters, whatever. So we already know where the text is located, cell A1, we have that right here, and we now need to figure out how many characters do we want to get. So this section right here, this dude, figures all of that out. And in this section, it is the find function that's going to return this number for us. So what do we supply for the find function? We supply what we want to look for. And then we tell it what text we want to look through. Now here is where it might get a little confusing, but we use the substitute function as a little trick. So what we do, you can see cell A1 right here, so we do reference this cell over here is we substitute one of the delimiters for a weird character that will never be in that cell. So here, substitute, I reference the cell that has the text we are going through. I reference the character, oops, the character that we want to find, which is this one right here. And everything within double quotation marks, of course, so quotation marks right here. And then the next thing is the text to find, or the text to replace it with. And this is the weird character that we don't want to find anywhere. We want it to not be found anywhere because we use the find function right here to find that weird character. And the substitute function, this is why we use it, it's so awesome, amazing, is it has another argument optional, which is the instance number. So which instance, which occurrence of this text right here do we want to replace? And that's what allows it to be so powerful so we don't have to nest a bunch of find functions, which you can do, but it's a horrible pain. So here, now what I want to do is I told you it's easier to go inside to outside with the function or the formula to explain it. That's what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it out into pieces so you can see just how it works. So let's take the substitute function right here. I shall copy it, go down here, and equal sign, paste it in there, and let's hit enter and see what happens. All right, so notice that right here where we had our little slash, it is now a squiggle. So that's what this cell is going to look like. And let's change it around so you can see how it works. Let's change it to one so it'll replace the first occurrence. Now the squiggle is right down here. And this is what we can use the find function for. So let's do a find function here. I'm going to type it in by hand because we're no longer referencing cell A1. So what do we want to find? We want to find the little squiggle within this text right here. So hit enter and we get three. This character appears at position three. One, two, Three. So I can change this up here, move it back to the third occurrence of the delimiter, and it occurs at position 19. Now we can use the left function. So you see up here, we have just done this right here. Now all we need to do, we have exactly how many characters we want to get from the left of the cell, is we use the left function. So left What's my text? This over here. How many characters? This many characters. And that's how we get the result. Now let's say that you don't want the slash at the end. That's really easy to do. We just have to subtract one from the number of characters that we want to get. So let's use this example, these three broken out functions right here first. Here is the number that we want to get, 19. So all we do is subtract one. Now watch the slash down here is going to go away. No more slash. Now, it's nice to show you it like this when it's broken out here, because when we implement that up here, it can look kind of confusing. So we see that for the find function, the opening bracket is red. So we go to the opening closing bracket right here, which is red, go just to the outside of it, and subtract 1. And there we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and remove the minus 1 here because it can be a little bit confusing. And if you need to remove the slash, hopefully you've watched to this point in the tutorial. So let's go to the next example now where we, where we want to get something from the right of the cell. It's a little bit different, but not too much different. 
So here is where we want to get something from the right. And let me make this smaller so we can fit it all in one line. Okay. So we've replaced the left function with the right function, has the same number of arguments, the, the exact same arguments, the text you want to use, and how many characters you want to get from it. This, as you can imagine, gets characters from the right of the cell instead of the left. So here we have A1 as usual, and I'm going to skip this little section. We have our find and substitute section just like in the last example. However, in this case, we need to do one more thing. So all of this is the same. Everything is the same. Left goes to right, but this. So the len function, you'll see this often with text manipulation formulas. The len function counts how many characters are in whatever you put in here. So we reference cell A1. It tells you how many characters are in cell A1. And that's needed because remember, find, although I didn't explicitly say this, I think it was assumed, find counts left to right. So find is going to find the occurrence of this little squiggle counting from the left. And we want however many characters remain after that. So I'm going to use a cool little trick here. If I select find and now hit F9, we can see its result. It is seven. So it found the squiggle at position seven because that's where the second slash is. I'm going to hit control Z to undo that. So we're doing the second slash here, not the third slash. So it returns seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But we want to get everything to the right of that. So if I just get seven, it's going to get something at the very end of the cell. It's not even going to be the full file name. It's not what we want. So we need to get the full count of all the text in, or all of the characters in the cell, how many there are. I'm gonna first undo that. Now let's calculate the length of all the characters in the cell. Once again, F9. 33. So we want to get everything to the right. We get the number of characters, 33. We subtract 7. Hit Control Z. Let us select all of this. F9. So we want to get 26 characters from the end of the cell. Let's hit Control Z to back that up. Everything here is the same as the other function, except we replace left with right and we get the count of the number of characters in the cell and minus subtract the result of the find function from that. And that's how we get this result. Now, like in the previous example, you can go right here at the end of the find and we could subtract one if you want. In this case, it'll remove an A. So that's not exactly what we want, but I'll show you how it works. So now the A from another has been removed. Let's hit Control Z to undo that. But maybe in this case you want to add a character. So you want to show the slash instead of remove it. Well, go over here and do plus one. And now we have the leading slash. So we have told it to get an additional character from the right of the cell. And that's why we got the slash. But now I will remove that so it doesn't confuse anyone who did not watch up to this point in the tutorial. And then down here, just another example of getting it from the right. Everything is pretty much the same, exactly the same, except we get it from the right of the third slash. And that's the only difference here. And I really just wanted to show you that once you've got your formula down for your data set, this is the only thing that you have to change. And this is a great set of formulas to use to get data from the left or the right of the cell without having to go through text to columns and then recombining the data afterwards and worrying about all of this. I'm going to go ahead and leave these three cells in here broken out. So it'll make it a little bit easier to work with editing the formula to work with your data set. And I hope you found this tutorial helpful. I hope you liked the tutorial. If it was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials.